Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Sputnik here and today we are going to talk about um, a battle between Sony A7 Mark III and Sony A6400. And why in the world I'm comparing these two cameras? Well, basically some five months ago I bought 6, uh, 6400, Sony 6400 as my second camera in the bag. And I was like, uh, you know, thinking of something that I will use sometimes as my secondary camera and just to, you know, have a, something for B-roll and for extra shots and so on and so on. And honestly, I found myself using more of this 6400 than Sony A7 Mark III. So I was like, you know, a hardcore uh, orthodox, uh, you know, photographer thinking that only full frame can do, you know, that only full frame cameras are, you know, pro cameras and all other cameras are just, you know, not bad, but not there. And I was wrong, I gotta admit, and, and this comparison to me between Sony A7 Mark III and Sony A6400, that is half of the price of this full frame camera, is in fact a battle between crop cameras and full frame cameras. I won't be mentioning things that I think that are not important, like, like this grip thing, how deep it is, how comfortable it is. I don't find it to be like important to me. So let's compare the specs. Both cameras produce great quality images and in most cases really I don't see much of a difference. You may ask, and what about shallow depth of field? With full frame camera, it's easier for you to get closer to the object at a longer lens and get this more shallow depth of field. But uh, having said that, you have super small and super cheap and super bright, for example, Sigma lenses for Sony system, Sony crop system, and they produce really very good results. You can see comparison on the same lens uh, right now between like uh, one system and another system of how shallow the depth of field is and is it really a big difference? To me, it is not. But, you know, like if you're a wedding photographer and like basically for weddings, I take A7 Mark III and, and that's the way to be. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just great thing to have in your hand and work with. However, I would go to shoot a wedding with Sony A6400 and I would just take more batteries. Okay, as we are talking about battery life, it used to be that crop sensor Sony cameras had like really not good battery life with this older, uh, you know, type of battery NPF or something. It was the case with full frame cameras since Sony switched to these bigger, uh, you know, power packs, the Sony NPFZ FZ100. Um, you know, it, it, you know, like durability of this camera on one on one battery improved significantly, but still, A6400 is very well optimized for the power pack for this battery it has, and the difference is not that big anymore. So, uh, if you are not planning to shoot all day long, both cameras will do just great job and are pretty long lasting on one charge. Let's talk about a very important thing about video um, quality. There are two main differences for videographers. One is that um, Sony A7 Mark III is a stabilized uh, camera, so the, um, the sensor inside is stabilized. In 6400 it is not. It is stabilized on 6600. Um, I mean, to me, it's not a diff difference, not a big difference, because I use gimbal anyways if I want a stable shot. Um, the uh, kit lens that comes with 6400 is stabilized and it does okay job, as well as stabilization in body uh, with Sony A7 Mark III. So it's not a big deal to me, but this is something to have in mind when you make purchase decision. Second difference, this is um, quality of image, 4K specifically. So when you shoot 4K in 24 frames per second, as I do, image quality of Sony A6400 is slightly better because it's downsampled from 6K. So it is slightly sharper, it gives you a little bit more detail. So I started to prefer recordings from A6400 and I would never say that before. I would never say that I would even think that something <laughs> may be better from a crop sensor camera 
but it honestly is so you can see now comparison between those two cameras and this is this was a huge surprise to me and um, one thing that um, you know is important for both photographers and videographers is dynamic range and this is better of course on Sony a7 Mark III so if you want to have the best dynamic range for example you shoot interiors and you want to have everything done in one shot not multiple shots for sure Sony a7 Mark III is a better choice with its better dynamic range. Conclusions, okay, because I, I think I said enough to compare these two cameras in most important areas. Um, both cameras perform great, both cameras are super capable. A6400 is way more capable as I thought, they um, improved battery life, they improved thermals of this camera so it doesn't overheat like it was in case of A6300 anymore and I really had okay experience with 6300 but the difference with this generation is huge. Battery life and uh, you know this overheating problem are way 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 better way improved the only thing that is a downside in case of Sony a6400 to me and I would like to mention and this is something that I kept for the for the for the end of this video is rolling shutter rolling shutter is still quite a problem with with 6400 and not a big problem, not a big thing, not, not something like that could be a deal breaker really. Okay, guys, what do you think about this comparison? What do you think? Is it necessary to have full frame camera or crop cameras are just okay, totally good to go for wedding photographers, interior photographers and so on? Let me know in comments below. And of course, um, this, um, you know, so like full frame versus crop is not only about Sony, it also is about Canon, it also is about Nikon. So if you find other comparisons worthwhile and you want me to do it in future on this channel, let me know in comments below. If you liked it, please leave thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. And I see you guys in the next episode.